Hello. Welcome. How's everybody doing? Yep. First mover mailbag almost was late. I was looking at the time going, I think it's time to do this. How's everybody doing? It's the last uh, mover mailbag with the beard. Very sad. I like the beard. I'm going to miss the beard. But alas, uh, allegedly, possibly my last week flying the T-38 next week. We'll see. I'm not telling anybody, except you guys. Y'all won't tell anybody, right? You won't tell people that it might be my Finney flight next week. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, last one. I just uh, recovered from the Chinese flu, Wuhan flu, whatever, Omicron. Yeah, it sucked. It wasn't as bad as the upper respiratory infection I had earlier uh, in December. So I guess I got it back to back, so to speak. Got the upper respiratory infection, and then a week later, I uh, I got COVID and tested positive, and so I just came out of quarantine. And I'm grateful. We talked about being more grateful, and uh, yeah, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that uh, yeah, it was nothing more than a cold. Uh, it sucked. I mean, man, colds are pretty bad. You know, I mean, for dealing with a cold, it's not the most fun, but. Uh, yeah, very grateful to have, uh, gotten out from, uh, that unscathed and here to answer your emails and questions and, um, all the things that we're going to talk about today. There's a lot of mover mailbag. In fact, I haven't done anything since my, uh, why 2021 was the worst or most difficult, uh, <clears throat> year of my flying career. I'm not going to answer all those emails online. And the reason I'm not going to do that, number one, there's a lot of them, and some of them are like really, really long emails. So I don't think that's really appropriate for this venue. But second, I'm not 100% sure some of these emails understood the concept of where they were sending it, like the mover mailbag being what I read on here versus sending it to me personally. So I don't want to get in, you know, there's a lot of personal stuff that I don't want to, you know, air out for other people. What I will say is uh, I'm very grateful for all the responses. Uh, especially those that have done the J-O-B, uh, fighter guys and gals uh, that have emailed me and said, hey, happened to me too, and this is my story, and this is how I got through it. Because I, this is exactly what I had hoped, was to open a dialogue and for people to realize they're not alone and for people to go, hey, look, happens to everybody. Let's figure out how we work through it and get back to flying so that it's not a, you know, end of career. And I did get some emails where it happened to people and it was the end of their career and that sucks. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. Uh, let's see. Uh, Andre, are you feeling the effects of long COVID? No, I don't have long COVID. Uh, it was five days and it has gone. I might have a little sniffle every now and then, but no, nah, I'm fine. Back to back to thing. Uh, Steven says I lost weight. Nope, I actually haven't. Got a haircut, but uh, I lost. Actually, I take that back. So I. Oh, God, we're going to talk vaccine stuff now. Please don't demonetize me. I back last year and I didn't mention this in that other video, but I got both shots prior to the incident back in March. Uh, my last shot was in February. I took all that time off and my first flight back was in March. And between taking the shot and that time, I gained about five pounds of water weight. And I kept that until um, right around July or August. And I could just couldn't, I, my diet hadn't changed. Uh, my workouts hadn't changed. I just had water weight that I just wouldn't go away. And then uh, after Key West, when I had whatever that was, food poisoning, uh, a virus, whatever it was that happened in Key West, I lost it. And I've actually gone down uh, 12 pounds from the peak. So, um, you know, and I've got much lower body fat and stuff. So I don't know what all that is, if it was water weight from, you know, a little bit of water retention from the shots or what, but I don't know. But anyway, um, yeah, let's not uh, get ourselves demonetized. From this, uh, let's see here, um, uh, three men in and demonetized, yes. Uh, when can I challenge you in DCS? Never, because I don't care. You're probably better and have at it. 
So anyway, let's go look at some of these emails that are non-related. Uh, also, as we go, I will take your audience questions because that is the whole point of this. This is the, I think it's fun. I think I enjoy interacting with you guys and gals um, and seeing, uh, Seeing what you have to say and 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 doing all that stuff, I'm gonna miss the beard. I really am. That's that's the saddest part of this whole thing. So let's see. Yeah, uh, first one is: Does this qual this qualify me to be an Air Force pilot? Uh, hello, CW. I'm Malachi. I wish to become a fighter pilot when I get older. It is a true passion of mine. I was wondering if I could become a fighter pilot with the following. I kind of get anxiety. I haven't been diagnosed with it. Could this disqualify me to become a fighter pilot? Thanks for reading and stay safe. God bless. So we talk, that's, I mean, it's appropriate because of that video we just did. Uh, undiagnosed, anything won't disqualify you. What I would say is more than whether you can be a fighter pilot or not, you need to get it. I, I think it's something you need to deal with and it's something you need to talk to somebody about and you need to get under, under control because I think it is something that people can overcome. I think you just need to figure out what's causing it and 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 what your I hate to use the word triggers, but what your triggers are and get that under control. And if you can, absolutely. You can be a fighter pilot all day long. Um, just be careful with uh, even even if you do get a diagnosis, there's ways to get uh, to get your medical and all that stuff. But just be careful how they diagnose you. And for the love of God, try to stay away from anything that will medicate you. You know, if you go get it treated, it's when you start talking medications and stuff like that, that's when stuff becomes grounding. But anyway, uh, let's see here. Uh, from the audience, is it possible for a foreign citizen to get American citizen citizenship and then enlist? You actually don't need American citizenship to enlist. In fact, enlisting can be a path to citizenship. I'm only talking enlisted, like the enlisted ranks, not officer, enlisted. Um, but yeah, it's impossible. It's, it, that is possible, yes. Uh, Darth Vader, sorry, Darth Windu says, just wanted to say your videos are really inspirational and you've got some really good tips on the channel for people who want to be fighter pilots like myself. Thanks for that. Be well. Awesome. Uh, how do you plan to commemorate your final flight in the T-38? Well, if this is it, uh, it's a red air sortie. So I plan on showing up to the brief, doing the flight and leaving and not telling anybody. That's it. This, that's it. The end. Uh, yeah. Fred says, try steroids. That will pound on the weight. Don't need to gain weight. Are you still writing another book? Eh, I've written two chapters. So, yes. No. Uh, mustache or beard? Definitely beard. Where is the beard thing? I don't know what that means. John F. Kennedy, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. I have a serious question. Can a foreigner become a Navy pilot? This is a very common question that's easily Googleable. You have to be a U.S. citizen to be an officer, period. So if you can go through all those steps, become a U.S. citizen, yes, you can become a Navy pilot. Uh, ever puke marching in formation? No. And I've only marched in formation the minimum required amount of times to, uh, get through OTS. That's not something we do. Uh, let's see. Does Lockheed Martin have the same kind of program for Viper operators like what Boeing does in Malaysia for the Hornet? I, well, Boeing doesn't anymore. I don't think, I mean, Gonkey's contract was canceled, but, uh, I would not go overseas because then what would I do with the puppy dogs? You know, I mean, it would be, I mean, I'd do something conus, but no, nah, I wouldn't do that. Uh, hey, Mover, in the future, when you retire from the Air Force, you grow out your beard and make it look like a real man beard. Yeah. Uh, hi, dude, I have the Rona. Pray for me. Well, if it's anything like the Rona I had, you don't need the prayers. Just wait a couple days. It'll be fine. Um... How's the vet? The vet is great. I'm not getting rid of it. I'm not going to trade it for anything. Uh, I might get AC06, but dude, I mean, if you're not number one on a list that's probably charging 50 grand over MSRP, you're probably not going to get a Z06 for the next five years. So it's unlikely. Uh, birthday's tomorrow. Well, happy birthday, Turbo. That's it. That's the tweet. Uh, would you be an airline pilot? I am an airline pilot. Next question. 
Uh, have you considered working for Draken as an aggressor pilot? Absolutely. Uh, do you honestly think you'll be picked up by another squad or military opportunity? Uh, is this the end of the line in your opinion? I, I don't know. That sounds like a loaded question. Like, well, do you really think so? Um, yeah, I think something's going to happen. I don't know what, but I think something's going to happen. How did you get yourself into a plane at such a young age? Uh, my dad. I mean, the first time he, we had a neighbor that had a Cessna 172 and he's like, hey, go fly with him. And then um, he paid for two lessons at the local FBO and then he paid for those Texas Aries things. I mean, that's it. I even I said that in the, in the thing. I have looked at Tucson. Tucson is only full time positions. And for full time, you got to move to Tucson. I can't move to Tucson. So, um, yeah. Back to the emails for a second. Uh, some questions regarding math skills. Hey, mover, been a long time sub and I have a few questions. I'm 20, want to become a pilot, but my math skills are kind of like lackluster. I'm pretty bad at calculating percentages without a calculator. So I was wondering if you had any little tips and tricks you use to make yourself to make math less of a hassle. Uh, that's about it for now. If you have any other questions, I'll email you. Uh, I mean, they give, they'll give you little tricks like the 60 to one rule and stuff. But I mean, you don't really do a whole bunch of, I mean, percent, you just move the decimal. It's not that hard. Uh, we don't do a lot of math. That's a, that's a kind of a misconception. There's not a lot of math. Uh, it's, it's all very basic. If you have to do math, it's very basic. You'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, let's see. Oh boy. Uh, another one from that. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Dear Mover, this comes from Dave. I just finished my first semester at this college. I'm majoring in aviation management. I got my PPL. I'm thinking about Air Force ROTC to go F4 after my dream of being a military pilot. My problem is that I think being an ROTC is going to cause me to lose focus on my core studies and cause my GPA to go down. I think I should extend my graduation out one year to compensate for a larger workload but I think it looked bad when I applied to military. Could you speculate on this for me? Uh, also, does going through college ROTC give you a better chance of getting a pilot slot over going through o o OTS? Uh, what now? First semester, so he's just starting? Yeah, I mean, dude, you're just going to have to buckle down. I mean, you're always going to have other stuff going on. So, uh, yes, ROTC gives you a better shot than just doing an OTS board. I mean, I don't even think they're having an OTS board right now. Um, but I would definitely say, don't worry, you're overthinking this, man. Just do it. It's, it's actually part of the curriculum. So you actually get a, a, a class for doing ROTC, but I would definitely recommend just, just go and do it, man. Yes, 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 yes. Back to you guys. Uh, uh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, trade the vet for a Viper. No. I'm not getting rid of the vet, so you guys can just uh, put that to bed. After your finny flight in the T-38, you get offered another job flying fighters, but it's a strike eagle. Do you take the job? Sure. Absolutely. Let's see what else we're saying here. More of an author question, but have you thought about trying to become an editor for like an... No, I don't want to do that. Mm-mm. I act like I need a job. I've got a job. I don't need another job. I was just looking for a military flying job. Mover, sir. I'm 56 now. I finally have the opportunity to get time to learn to fly. Is there an age limit to get a private and then a commercial license? Nope. As long as you can pass a medical, you're fine. And for you, it's just actually, if you did sport pilot, it would just be your driver's license. But if you want to get your PPL, you need a class three. Oh boy. Any thoughts on the Trevor Jacobs th stunt? Uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like there's so many videos about the Trevor Jacobs thing that the only question I had is, is are, are at some point, is he going to come out and be like, Oh, it was just an elaborate ruse be or, or, you know, was that, is it part of the plan to create the hype? And he, you know, there's actually something that, totally legit that he did that makes it all worthwhile. I don't know. Um, I mean, I seems kind of stupid to me. 
But anyway, uh, is there a limit on a foreigner, like a rank or something else they can't do compared to U.S. citizens? Become a U.S. citizen. There's no limits. You can't be an officer if you're a foreigner. Uh, what do you mean? What do I do with a tax refund? Uh, tax refunds are for the poor. If you're paying, if you're getting money back from Uncle Sam, you're not paying them enough. Wait, are you paying them too much? Yeah, you're paying them too much. That's the one. If you got to ask how you got in a plane at such a young age, you can actually fly solo in gliders at the age of 14. You're a cool dude. Thanks, EW. You even put EW in the cool, so that's how you know it's his trademark. Uh, mover from Toronto. Love all your streams. Huge fan. What's the most popular of the Spectre books? I think Spectre Rising. There's actually a sale right now on the Spectre series box set, container set, books one through four. That's only a buck for all four books, and that ends next week, so get after it. Oh, speaking of things. Hey, don't forget uh, Heli Expo. Bam! My obligatory pitch. Uh, if you register by the 14th, you can save money, I guess. I don't know, but I'll probably be there depends on what happens with the airlines but trying to be there uh why are you so handsome i see the beard as soon as i get rid of the beard it's gone glad you survived would you consider adapting your books to a movie yes yes that is what i'm working on 100 percent yes uh, do you plan on flying a 505? If I could find a 505 to fly, sure. I tried to talk them into like letting me borrow one for a North America World Tour, but they didn't go for that. They don't have any. Did the car dealership that tried to scam you ever reach back to you after you posted that video? No, uh, I take that back. I got a GM customer satisfaction report because they they actually recorded a sale, believe it or not. So they reported to GM that they had sold me that vehicle. And then GM sent me the uh, customer satisfaction survey, the one that they're like so afraid that if you put a zero, you know, they lose money. So I put a zero. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? On a scale of one to 10, how much did Tickshell have the Navy dress white? Uh, I was a Navy reservist. I don't know. I have not. All right. Have you flown a F-117 before? I found that plane so interesting. No, but Skid, friend of the channel, did. And we did an interview. It was a great time. Hey, Mover, big fan from Brazil. Hope you're doing great. I am. Thank you. Things are going well. What's the best thing about living in New Orleans? Living away from New Orleans. I actually live on the north side of the lake. Um, yeah. Any interest in going to SHOT Show? Sure. I'd go to that. Well, minus the air travel part. God, going anywhere right now. Is, I, I hope eventually we go back to some level of sanity. Cats or dogs? Dogs. 100% dogs. I got a dog right here. He's just hanging out. Has the reserves given you the option to reclass into another career field after the flying gig is up? No. They've given us no support whatsoever. Uh, what other helicopter do you want to fly? All of them. The Apache would be cool. Why can't you keep the beard? Because uh, the reserve, the military and the airlines are stuck in ye olden times where I guess having a beard meant that you were poor or something. I don't know. There's, there's some stigma against beards in the U.S. So the military and airlines won't allow them, even though there's nothing wrong with it. And don't give me the, oh, the mask won't seal. Because contractors, ATAC, Drocken, and all those, those guys do allow beards. To fly fighters with a mask. Seal's fine. Uh, do you think we'll see more AI wingmen? I, I do, but I think it'll be a while. Are there any aircraft you would refuse to fly? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Pointy jets versus pointy sports cars. Depending on the sports car. I mean, and it depends on what we're doing. You know, what, what, in, in what context need more info? Yeah. All right. Mindstorm says, do you remember that moment? The moment that sparked the love of aviation in you? For me, it was back in 91 when they used to televise the Dayton air show and I saw the blue angels demo for the first time. I think it was 
commercial flight from uh, Lafayette to Dallas and then on to San Francisco back before San Francisco sucked. Um, I think it was like Continental or something. It was awesome. I mean, I remember just staring out the window the whole time. It was awesome. I know everyone is different, but how long did it take you specifically to get adjusted to motion sickness as a pilot? I wasn't a pilot. I had that one time, and then the next time I took Dramamine, and then I never took Dramamine again after that, and then it never happened again. It just, I mean, it, it's something you do uh, uh, many times. Now, I did get a little queasy when I was doing aerobatics with like a pits, but that's because inverted stuff. I hated that. You know, outside loops and stuff like that. Uh, Michael says, thanks for your, here we go, right here. Thanks for your efforts and your service. Love your channel. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. What are your thoughts on the CF-18? Great jet. I flew against them. They used to come down to Homestead and we'd fight them. A lot of fun. Do you own an AK? I own an AKV. Nine millimeter AK. Uh, not sure if this is asked. Have you become a C5? No. Not really. Canadian military have beards. Yeah, a lot of militaries have beards except for us. Let's see if there's any more emails that I forgot. Uh, professional take on this video. Oh, it's the Trevor Jacobs thing. Yeah. You can get... uh, let's see. I usually don't write people. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, it's another one of the things I'm not too sure. Uh, here's one that says we should start a GoFundMe and buy me a, an F4, a MiG-21, MiG-29, a Su-27. Yeah, that'd be great. Here we go. Colton asks, does the Air Force, Guard, Reserve, frown upon fighter pilots who rock climb, mountain bike, snowboard? Uh, no, in fact, if you recall, the demo pilot uh, was snowboarding and broke his arm or strained his arm. Remember that? You do have to do like a hazardous activities worksheet, but that's it. I can see there being a potential issue due to the sheer amount of resources the Air Force invests in their pilots and the hazards of those sports bring. Thanks in advance for your time. Uh, that's it. Yeah, just as long as you, I think as long as you are up front with them, and if you're a reservist, it doesn't matter at all. Uh, let's see, enemy within, a lot of people... No, nope. a lot of video, a lot of emails on that, which I appreciate. Here's one. Uh, I was a C-130 nav during the 90s and 2000s. Had a couple combat tour, ALO tour, the 82nd. Obviously, I have tons of pilot bros. Early on, most of my guys went through a 38 and standard old school UPT. Then they went to the T-1, T-44 track. Several guys were T-38 FAPs that I flew with. They all spoke of the difficulty landing the jet of students, particularly in UPT. The whole class went through the 38. Later, the fighter-bomber track guys still had trouble with the jets. Seems to me an increasing cadence of Class A's with the T-38s in recent years. I know removing formation landings will help, and maybe T-38C avionics helps uh, some, but it seems like there's a borderline unacceptability of this jet with modern UPT students. T-38A also seem to be accident-prone with ACE or similar programs. Now that you're done, likely with a 38, do you feel this aircraft is safe? Knowing the risk-averse uh, approach of AATC, I'm somewhat surprised that the recent accidents haven't generated more angst in a jet that has over 230 Class A's out of 1,100 or so ever made. Seems awfully high for a trainer. Uh, perhaps I'm wrong, but the T-45F is a much lower rate. I thought there would be a much stronger push to get T-7 filled quicker. It's contracting, man. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows that... You know, you're flying 60-year-old airplanes, and, you know, it, it was designed in a time with Century Series fighters, so, you know, it was the trainer for, like, an F-100, you know, it, so it flew a lot more like an F-100. When we got into fourth-gen fighters, it wasn't even close. Like, it doesn't fly like anything we fly today um, or anything we've flown in the last 30 years. So, but our contracting system is broke, and it takes forever to field a replacement. So that's why the T7, I think the T7 is like 2028 or something. It's not even close to being ready. So uh, do I think it's creating more mishaps? No, I mean, training is inherently dangerous. You're taking somebody who's never flown a high performance supersonic jet and putting them in the front seat. That's obviously going to have more problems. But do I think it's outdated and it's time to change? Yeah. Uh, do I think some of the stuff we've done with the A models? Yeah. I mean, we should have had at least... The thing that drives me nuts is that 
because the bureaucracy is what it is and the government contracting program is what it is, we're so limited. Like there was a push a while back for uh, the Tufets, which is the squadron that owns the jets that I fly, the active duty. They were going to hand over the squadron to the reserves and the reserves were going to take over the T-38 mission and it was going to become an associate unit where the active duty were attached versus what it is now. So it was going to flip roles. And what that would have allowed to happen for those aircraft, just to give you an idea of how silly this is, because now the reserves had it, it would have been INGRIA money. Uh, don't ask me what INGRIA stands for. You can Google it. Um, and we could have upgraded all the jets with new seats and new avionics and off the shelf avionics. So it, it just like they put a new transponder in the aircraft because we had to be uh, MODES capable. And the it's like this big, right? It's, it's like a, a little panel. Well, they filled up the whole panel because that's what the spec said. That could have easily been a multifunction display. But we got this thing and it was like seventy five thousand dollars per aircraft to do it. You know, seventy five grand. If you'd have gone on the civilian market per aircraft, I mean, you'd have had a glass cockpit, autopilot. The jets would have looked like the NASA T-38s. I mean, we waste so much money in the military just for because of the bureaucracy and the contracting rules and how this pot of money can't be used for this and stuff. When you could have just gone and picked up an off the shelf component, stuck it in there and had a very safe, nice setup. So like we we tie our own hands, but um, yeah, I mean, what's going to happen with the C model eventually to give way to the T seven and the A model just go away completely and give way to, you know, contractors who aren't hamstrung by this and they'll upgrade their jets and have really nice aircraft with really nice avionics. So is what it is. Uh, let's see how, uh, thank you, Michael. Also another Michael, I'm sure you mentioned in the past, could you tell how you got the call sign mover? Uh, I did. Uh, there's a whole, if you go watch the very first video I did on the channel, uh, strafe to herd of cows, what it comes down to. All right, let's go back to the, uh, here we go. Uh, let's see here. Have you ever flown F-22? No. And if I miss your question, I'm sorry, there's a whole bunch of them. You know, I mean, it is what it is. If you could take your personal vet around any track, which, which would you choose? Which track? Uh, hmm. Maybe cool to go do road Atlanta or Daytona. Daytona would be fun. Uh, looking to go into Intel for the Air Force. What was your experience with Intel guys? Eh, pretty good. I mean, it's hit or miss. Some are really sharp, uh, really helpful, really useful, you know, give you a lot of information. Some are just a little nerdy, you know, but for the most part, I've never had a bad experience with Intel. Usually pretty good. What is my experience? Yeah. What is your opinion on the Su-57? Go watch the video. Video you, you had where you discussed the struggles of 2021 was very impressive. Thank you. Let's see. How much longer are you thinking before you'll be a captain for the airlines? Oh God, never. Um, Theoretically, with my seniority, I could have held it in June because there are people junior to me that just were awarded captain. But I don't have a thousand hours of 121 time and I'm not planning on going back to the airlines anytime soon. Um, let's see what else. Any part 135 helo? No, I'm not doing I don't want to get a helo job. I'm just not not looking for it. Not interested. How's Lester? He's great. Uh, obviously, I haven't been able to fly with him. Um, the first time I had to cancel because of the upper respiratory infection. And then I was like, okay, dude, let's go. And then I got Rona. So, um, yeah, is what it is. Maybe next year. I do have, I am actually, while well, I was, I stopped editing. I'm editing a video with, with Lester uh, from December where we started doing some more training. So... What aircraft do you enjoy the most, least to fly? I don't know. 
I mean, flying is a privilege. It's fun no matter what. I mean, if I had to pick between jets, you know, the Viper was a lot of fun just because, you know, you're just sitting on top of the world. There's no canopy bow or whatever, but to dogfight, you know, the Hornet was nice because it didn't pull a lot of G's, but you could still be pretty lethal. Um, yeah. Why don't fighter pilots have a submachine gun in there? They actually do now. The Gal 5, I think, is what the... Yeah, the, there's a thing now. Uh, any chance of getting Killer Chick, the A-10? I don't know her. I mean, I don't know her. Do you have some kind of special light pilot life insurance? I don't. I mean, I don't have any reason to, but I mean, I give it to my dogs. But, I mean... There's SGLI, there's all kinds of stuff, but yeah. Uh, hey, Mover, do you think fighter pilots could and would like to be Formula car racing drivers by profession? I would love to. Would you know somebody? Are you hiring? I'd love to go drive for a NASCAR team. I think it's a little late for that, though. Uh, no, I've never done anything with the fighter pilot podcast. When are you going to take the car to the track? I got to find a track day. So maybe February. I think they're resurfacing it. Uh, I'm 177 centimeters. Somebody translate that for me. Whatever that is in feet. Are you over 6'4"? If so, it's going to be close. Is the F5 better? Yes. Very much so, because the the difference is you've got the leading edge root extensions, you got the leading edge devices, leading edge flaps. I guess I don't know if they call them flaps, but you got two engines with more thrust. Uh, it's got a little bit of a radar. It's got a gun. It's got weapon systems and stuff. Yeah, it's a much better aircraft. Uh, let's see. What else we got? He tried making his own ground beef. Oh, I'm so far behind. I always get so far behind on these comments. I'm sorry. Uh, any updates on Lester's campsite? That's a good question. I'll have to ask him next time I fly with him. What are your thoughts on the Icon A5? Uh, well, I don't have a seaplane rating. Um, I don't know much about them other than they're very pricey. And a lot of people think that that's a downside. That's all I know. Did you fly one World War One plane? Sure. Uh, Stringfellow flew one. Uh, there's a whole episode with Airwolf where they're flying World War One planes. The first video was not taken down. If you go to the very first video I made uh, on this vlog, episode one, it's still there. All stories up there. And Top Gun, Charlie criticizes Maverick split us during a combat exercise. Was her criticism valid? Well, they don't give a whole lot of context, but would a civilian contractor be debriefing you like that? Probably not. I've never been debriefed by a civilian. Uh, just sim, sim instructors sometimes, but that's it. What's more common? Hilo heavy fighters? Oh, I don't know. I've seen a lot of Wizzos go to pilot training. I mean, they have to go to pilot training, so they're not just moving to the front seat. They're full up going to UPT. Any advice? Uh, my advice for flying lessons in general, it's very expensive. So I tell people, save the money up front and then plan to fly at least three times a week. Because I think you'll save yourself the money if you can fly more often, more repetition stuff. It's the people that fly like one time here, one time there. They spend too much time trying to relearn stuff where if they just go bam 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 as quickly as possible they usually do the best uh thanks randy thoughts on krav maga i don't think it it works very well uh i mean it works as a survival thing but especially in this litigious society i don't think it's the best you know because it, the whole point is to uh kill your attacker's ability or means to continue attacking you so it's not really a compliance tool which is what law enforcement is but a lot of people disagree on that so you know i, I guess it just depends on your what school of krav maga you've, you've been through but i think 
you know, whatever your agency teaches you is what you should do for liability purposes. Do more dog vet and shooting vlogs. I should. I got my dog right here. That's the only downside of having this set up webcam is I can't show you the pupper. When will we see your next channel married to mover? I don't know. Any update on Gonky? Yeah, he's doing great. Uh, have, I, have you ever flown a hang glider? No, I've not. Do you ever consider applying to the Thunderbirds or Blue Angels? No. Mm -mm. Nope, I have not. How do you get power in the 38C to the ADSB? Well, it's part of the when the generator comes online. Uh, are you talking? Wait, are you you're talking ADSB, not the Mode S? So it's battery powered. We charge it and then we walk out and turn it on, put it on the little Velcro, and then it hooks to the iPad. Uh, hi, I'm from India. Big fan of your channel. Keep up the great work. I love your perspectives on life, especially make them tell you no. Best of luck in all your future endeavors. Happy landings. Thank you. Uh, 177 centimeters. Finally, we got that answer. 5'8". You are not too tall at all. Which one would you adapt in the first movie? That's an interesting question. So here's the deal with that. I, personally, I would do Spectre Rising. If, if like, if I had an unlimited budget, um, I would do Spectre Rising. The problem though, is I don't have an unlimited budget and won't have an unlimited budget anytime soon. So, and the reason I say that is because flying scenes are expensive. Like if you're going to do the flying stuff in Spectre Rising, you're probably talking hundred to 150 million easily. And that's not including big names. That's just to get the jets out there to do all the sequences and stuff. I don't want to have to ruin my own movie. Right. I don't want to like after all of this and then go do CGI jets and all that stuff. Bah, no. So the most realistic, at least for the first one, is absolute vengeance because it is the lowest budget required to still create a good product. So I think that is where now once that's done, then, yeah, I would do. I think Finny Flight would be a really cool movie, especially with the flankers or, you know, some other aircraft. Um, I think Spectre Rising would be a great movie. Brick by brick, yeah. Um, it, uh, Executive Reaction would be a good one. Executive Reaction would be a real good one. But again, they all require, you know, big special effects, aircraft, stuff like that. Gets expensive quick. Uh, did you find Talladega Nights a funny movie? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I don't think I like your tactics. I'm just going to sit here and act tough till I figure them out. Uh, what are your thoughts on the UAP? I actually did a whole video on that and people got pissed off because I didn't say whatever the company line was about. Oh, it's aliens. What was one of your favorite helicopters? Uh, the Apache or Airwolf. Airwolf or the Apache. Either of those two. Sometimes I identify as an Apache. Uh, please make a video of your next track day. Absolutely. Yes, will do. I've got two sets of wheels and tires now. I'm, all, I'm ready to go. Uh, I've never been to Point Magoo. No, I've never been. To, we almost went, but I never, never did. Uh, we were going to do a missile shoot there, and we ended up going to Miramar. Uh, with the inductive ridge, yeah. Wow, weasel missions. Yep. Salty Jim says, great advice. Make sure your CFI shows up too. Yep, that is a prerequisite if you will how can i die against you in dcs is there i don't no i don't <laughs> here's the thing man dcs frustrates me it really does it just it frustrates me not because there's anything wrong with dcs it's just uh, like the way my setup is you know it takes like i only play like once every so often so then you got to update it you got to pull the controllers out you got to move everything i don't have a, a dedicated setup and stuff got to get the vr thing going you know, it'll probably crash three or four times and I'll go play and then I'll be like, why am I doing this? You know, I'd rather do the real thing. I do like DCS for helicopters. Uh, I like flying the Huey, but I just, I just uh, fighter stuff doesn't interest me that much, you know, at least not right now. Um, you know, cause I've done it. I've done it in real life. It's not a, I don't know. And then doing DCS videos, I found number one, you know, the, the views aren't 
worth it. You know, people don't watch the videos. They get mad. I get a lot of, in fact, you know, average, I get about 20 um, people unsubscribing per DCS video. The comments are usually as toxic as you can get. You know, it's it's just not fun. Like, it just drags me down, you know, to do them. And it's it, you get people that either know more than you, uh, want to critique everything you do, want to be mad at you because you're not taking it seriously enough. But if you do take it seriously, then they tell you you're doing it wrong. It just, I mean, it's like, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I will be interested in the Apache when it comes out and the Kiowa. But as far as the fighter stuff, I don't know. That's all subject to change, but that's just the way I'm, you know, my honest mover. It's just the way I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it right now. Let's see. Will you be adopting any more pups? No. Oh, three is enough. Three is plenty. Plenty, plenty. Uh, thank you, Mover. My closest flight school is about an hour's drive away, so I'll definitely keep you posted. Yeah, please do. And an hour's not too bad. I mean, I was driving an hour to go fly with Lester. It's not that bad. Get an audio book. Get an audio book. Passes the time. You know, especially if you can get an audio book on flight like to help you prepare for the oral or written exam that'll that'll you know two birds one stone uh any any interest in jumping out of a perfectly good aircraft aka skydiving i have been skydiving i jumped with the golden knights <clears throat> i just saw your 100k on youtube thanks fred apple pie or apple crumble neither i don't like apple any kind of sweets with apple AR or AK. Yeah, my old AR. Your D amount made the dog walk off. Uh, would you do a vlog on EAA Oshkosh? I need to go to Oshkosh. I've never been. I would if I go. Have you met any pilots that haven't watched Top Gun? No, but I've met a film producer that hasn't watched Top Gun, which is mind-blowing. Have you adapted any of your books for films? Uh, yes. Yeah, I've got scripts for two of them. Sorry, I'm so far behind. Here we go. Who would you pick to play Chloe Moss? Ooh, that's a good question. That is a good question. Who would, sorry, the rest of the question, because people always say I don't read it enough. Who would you pick to pay Chloe Moss in a Spectre Rising movie if you had the budget to do the book justice? Uh, my God, I don't know. Chloe would be a tough character to pick because you want somebody that seems likable on the surface, you know? No spoilers, but you want somebody, it's got that likability that, you know, so you're like, <gasps> good question. Thanks for all you do. Retired USA up. I spent a lot of time underground and are behind big doors and concrete. Oh, gosh. That does sound like an interesting mission. Spent hours and hours researching the Nimitz event. And it was one of the most significant events in human history. I'm going to disagree with you there. I just, there's just not enough information to say that. That's my opinion only. I just don't think so. How's the new truck doing? You mean the uh, Durango Hellcat? Here's the thing with the Hellcat. I've thought about trading it in because... It's not a whole lot of room for an SUV and you know, it doesn't, it's not very like it, it serves no purpose. Like it doesn't have a lot of utility, but then the sports stuff is like, well, when will I ever use the sports stuff? Because I'm, I'm it's a daily driver. I'm using it to haul the dogs around or go back and forth to Eglin or whatever. When I want to do fun stuff, I get in the vet because the vet's more fun. So it's just a, it's a thing with no real mission. What's your favorite DCS module? Why is it the C101? I think I've flown the C101 once. It was not my favorite. What advice would you give to any aspiring? Well, it's the same thing. Make them tell you no. I'd also tell you to go to make them tell you no.com because I created an FAQ that answers a whole bunch of questions that you might have. And I don't get paid for that. Like that's just for freeze. Um, hi mover. Have you ever played war thunder? If you haven't, I suggest you do. No, it doesn't interest me at all. Uh, have you ever read any manuals in your life? Yes. Uh, I used to read the dash one for the, whatever aircraft I was flying. Air Hunter says, yep. Sounds like the DC. And that's a shame. It really, it, it really is. I mean, what's funny is I hate to go back to this, but when I first started, I totally underestimated the DCS community because, you know, it was like, Hey, everybody's like play DCS, play DCS. And I said, okay, if we raise this money for hurricane Michael, 
I'll do it. And I did it. And, you know, there was a lot of negativity, but I kind of brushed it off. And the more I got into it, I was like, oh, you know, there's some there's some good parts to this, too. But it just, you know, I guess one of the biggest disappointments for me was Gonky, me and Gonky doing that F-16 versus F-18. I thought that video was going to do great. I thought that was going to be a fun video. People were going to enjoy it. And then, you know, the comments were going to be good. And all I got, you know, all it seemed to be was people were like, you know, you two idiots, neither of you know what you're doing. You know, why aren't you guys full up? Why are you doing this wrong? Why are you saying, like, it's like, this is a charity thing, man. This is for, we're trying to, to do the folds of honor thing, the fight for honor. And, you know, and, and all you ever get is, well, you should play this YouTuber and you should fight this YouTuber and this YouTuber is going to kick your ass. And it's like, dude. I do this for a living. I don't care what another gamer does. Like it doesn't, who cares? So yeah, I'll take a break. Yep. Yep. Do you get recognized in public as a result of this channel? Yes. And I still don't know how to deal with it. So I'm sorry in advance if I awkwardly say nothing or turn around. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I'm just not used to it. I could just, I'm just sorry. Yeah. Um, wow. The DCS vids are cool to me. They give me insight. Yep. And that's, that was the whole point, you know, I mean, I don't know. Agree. DCS isn't the fun. Yep. So I guess we're catching up on comments. I want to be a Marine aviator. I know there'll be other dudes like a fact tour. Do you know of any other duties? Uh, you'll be in charge of other Marines. Uh, but I can't speak to that. And, you know, I only know the Navy, the Navy, you know, we were in charge of like, you have a department maintenance or safety or admin or something. <clears throat> so Sandy says LSPDFR is a lot of fun. It is. I, I agree. I agree. Why does it feel like the plane is at 90 degree angles when it's turning? I mean, it's probably 45 degrees, you know, I mean, you're just sitting there. Where do you get it? Books, uh, any ebook retailer. So Amazon, Barnes and Noble, um, Kobo books. Uh, it's, it's, it's one U S dollar. So that's, it's the first four books. Any gaming fan base is cringe. Yeah, you're right. That's true. Yeah, with the Golden Knights. So they were out at Homestead. We were giving them, in fact, I gave a guy. Uh, it was kind of cool because I got to give a Golden Knight an incentive ride in the back seat. And then they took me, you know, skydiving, which I thought was cool. Will you be ruining the Trevor? J no, I just don't want to. I don't want to weigh in on that. I want to be a part of it. It's weird. I mean, it's not. I just no, no. Let's see. Do simulate something you actually do in real life. Imagine a farmer doing farming simulate. I mean, there's some entertain entertainment value, you know, at first. You're like, oh, yeah, that's cool, you know, whatever. But at the end of the day, like a farmer doing farming simulator is going to have comments that he's doing it wrong. I mean, a trucker doing trucking simulators, they're going to have nerds telling them. In fact, I've seen that. There was some girl that did that. And, you know, you read the comments and it's the same. It's, it doesn't matter what you do. What are your favorite nonfiction books you think can help in personal development? I like Noonan's book, Fly Into the Wind. I thought that was really helpful, especially with some of the stuff I was going through last year. I read that book and I, I really, I really enjoyed it. I like Jordan Peterson. The problem with Jordan Peterson to me is that sometimes it can be a little dry and clinical. So, you know, it, it takes a little bit to kind of trudge through. He's a very smart dude. Like he comes across a lot better on YouTube than he does in some of his books because it seems to be written towards like people way smarter than me. But I do enjoy, you know, what he talks about and, and his books in general. You know, you're talking, you know, personal development wise. I watch your DCS and GTA 5 videos. What about some sort of helicopter DCS tournament, rescue combat, something? That might be something Jolly Pilot, Pilot would be interested in doing. I don't know. That would be something to talk to him. That's a good idea. Um... Jennifer Garner. Hmm. I don't know. She's still doing stuff. I only see her. Isn't she the one doing like the Capital One commercials? Get the new Jeep Wagoneer. I, you know, I like the new Escalades actually. I like cause the Super Cruise, you know, I'm, I'm all about technology, man. 
Understandable about DCS, especially the toxic community. I don't blame you. I still enjoy your DCS videos. Look for it. Yeah, the Apache and the Phantom in the future. Yeah. I didn't know the Phantom was coming out, but that would be awesome. Thanks for explaining pilot life to this pilot dad. Battle Penguin forever. God, Fat Amy. It's never going to not be Fat Amy. What are the chances of meeting you in person at Tyndall? Very low. I mean, considering I only have one more week left, um, that would probably not be a good place. If you really want to meet me, let me put that banner back up. Uh, for sure, well, assuming I don't go back to the airlines, which is possible, uh, go to Heli Expo. I'll be there. Assuming right now it's kind of weird. I'm scheduled for training, but I'm trying to get that changed. Uh, but right now, Heli Expo, uh, you can probably meet me there. Um, but there will be other opportunities as well. Let's see. Oh, God, I got so many questions. Have you ever thought of getting a classic car? Uh, no, I don't have any bigger garage if I'm going to do. I mean, I'm already the garage is full. You know, I mean, it's. Do you see yourself doing any new military flying jobs in the future? I hope so. I don't know the answer, but I hope so. Uh, have you ever flown to fly an L-39? I actually have 10 hours in an L-39. So yeah, I've flown it. Spectre and Cinema. Kobe Smulders has... I'm going to have to Google that. A personal one. Were you nervous with your first YouTube video? I get content blocked every time I consider the idea. Who would care? Um, Yeah. First time I did the YouTube video. I mean, if you go back and look, it wasn't very high quality. But, uh, you know, I was always nervous about not the public, but the peers. Like, I cared about what other fighter pilots thought. And that, you know, last year when the meme pages were like, hey, he's clout chasing and stuff, that really affected me because I don't care what a random commenter says. I care about what, you know, the bros think. And so when I thought that the bros were you know, thinking that that really sucked, but, um, yeah, it's just something you push through, you know, you realize, you realize what you're doing and what your purpose is and just keep pressing forward. You know, we've done a lot of good work on the channel. I've had a lot of fun, met a lot of good people. I'm not, I'm not gonna apologize for that. Uh, if you ever thought of getting classic events into muscle car and Bullies Jeep, my dad restored a Willie's Jeep uh, before he died. Um, very sad thing. Uh, DCS community can be negative. Most of the community are willing to teach new people, fly for fun, just want to have a fun time. It's not that I had a bad experience. It's just, you know, it's it, it it's cumulative, right? You know, because this, the loudest, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. And, you know, when you have YouTube videos, everybody has a platform. You know, everybody's going to comment. Everybody's going to email you. And, you know, it's just, you got to weigh cost benefit, you know, and, and editing videos and making videos is a lot of work. And, you know, you look at what's fun versus what's just work and pain. And, you know, it started to just be, uh, yeah. Uh, can we yell mover if we see you? Everybody does. The people that have, yeah, that's usually what people say. Which deployment did you like most in your career? Looking back at the time, I wasn't a huge fan, but looking back, I mean, going to Iraq was a, 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 a interesting experience. You know, it was a good, I would do it again. You know, I would do it again, especially with the people I was with and the stuff we did. And I would do it again. Someone diagnosed with ASD. So I'm usually socially awkward. I can understand that feeling. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Are your books published outside the U S yeah, you can get them. International people can get them as well. Uh, Hey mover. When you said you flew with the Canadian air force, what was it like? Yeah, we just did BFM. We did BFM and intercepts and stuff. That's it. We just, they were cool. Uh, really cool people. Can you show us your AR? Not, well, not on this video, but I don't know if that'll get demonetized. YouTube's in guns, man. I don't know. I don't know. Which World War II aircraft would you like to fly? The P-51. <laughs> Junk says 28 years in a truck. No, I'm not going to play a damn trucking sim. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, what do pilots do if they have to land on the emergency on the highway for emergency? Well, you're not talking fighter pilots because we don't do that. But I mean, you, uh, you know, look look out for wires and traffic and hope for the best. <clears throat> I'd like to get your books in paperback or hardback. Yeah, you can do that on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. Catherine Bell, boy, I had such a big crush on Catherine Bell. Jag, oh God, yeah. Uh, you back on the line? No. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Not yet, at least. Oh, there you go. Somebody just asked, what, you, what is your opinion on JAG? And that's, that's, that's the answer. Is F-14 a good dogfighter, just BVR? I mean, compared to a Viper or a Hornet, no. But I never fought one. I just, everybody that I've talked to said, yeah, not so much. Do a cooking vlog. I don't cook. I have an air fryer. You know, I press the button. I wait. I take it out, I cut the chicken up or steak or whatever. I only put steak in there for salads, not for actual steak. Actual steak must be grilled. Uh, we're getting some of the same questions over and over. Uh, so can you ever fly fighters again with your health issue? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm full up. I mean, I'm technically in an 11F now. So even though it's a T-38, I'm flying it as a fighter pilot. So yeah has nothing to do with any, I don't, I mean, technically I don't have a health issue. It's a stage one thing. So there's no issues at all. Uh, Hey mover, a little late to the stream. How are you? How's the mental? The, so that video was a, Hey dude, I, I, it went from something early in 2021 to overcoming it. I mean, it's, it's fine. You know, it's not, a lot of people got confused too. They're like, well, you're still going through it because of the way you're talking. I'm like, well, how else am I supposed to say a story? You know, do you want me to be boring and like, Hey guys. And then this happened and like it, part of being a storyteller is to have emotion and to remember it and not to, you know, it's acting if you will. So no, I wasn't, you know, reliving it or having a panic attack while I was telling it or any of that nonsense. It's just, um, it was something I went through. I uh, got over it about July, August time frame, and I've been great ever since. So, you know, it's a it's a daily process that one day at a time, um, you know, and it's something that especially with trying to practice gratitude and living in the moment and all that stuff. But it's definitely not something that is a continuing issue. Why not get a moderator and eliminate the haters? Because it, it, to me, it's OK, so. Nobody watches it. The comments are full of angry people. Like, what's the what's the draw? You know, I mean, what's the point? Do all UPT bases have a centrifuge? I no, I don't think any of them do. I think just right pat. It's the only one. What is easier to BFM and the F? Uh, I think they're about the same. You just have to know the strengths and weaknesses of both of them. You know, you can't. You have to fight. Fight your game plan. How much ground ordnance have you dropped? A lot. Thankfully, a lot. When will you pin 05? I haven't even selected for 05, and I doubt I will. I haven't done PMA. Uh, are we going to do a fighter violet meme video again? No. No, we're not. Let's see. Uh, I'm an ex-Marine sergeant, but I've gotten into RC planes of Gray Jet Hornet. Would like to have your permission to put your name on it. Sure. That about sounds fun. Send me a picture. Uh, the Air Force did practice landing planes on highway. Yeah, that was the A-10. We don't do that in emergencies, though, like in the Viper or anything else. How old am I? 38. Uh, have you had a dog fight with a strike eagle? No. Modern day chef equals air fryer. Yeah, that's true. Uh, thank you for your, I'm not going to post the name. Thank you for your 2021 video. Help me immensely coping with my own issues. You have no idea how much that video has helped people like me. And that's the point. That was exactly the point. When is the track content spinning up spring? Next time we can do a track day, which I think is February. I'm 
Military pilots actually were military watches. I don't know what you mean by military watches. Most of us wear the Garmin Phoenix. I actually bought this one. Uh, we had a Phoenix five that they issued us. And then I was like, no, mine broke. So I bought a Phoenix uh, six Sapphire. Have you seen that uh, NCS New Orleans were Chinese spy? No, but they came out and filmed while I was there. We were part of that filming. They had some weird ideas when we were in the sim. Do you have to skydive as preparation for ejecting from a jet? No, you don't. You parasail, but you don't skydive. Toga or flex? That sounds like some airline nerd stuff. What is it? Uh, Airbus versus Boeing? So what do you do if you're in an emergency situation in a densely populated area with no clear area to jump jet? Jump jet? You mean to eject? I mean, you get eject. You're not going to ride it in. You, like you don't, like there's no point in both riding it in, killing yourself and killing the people on the ground. You know, you do your best to try to avoid populated areas, but at the end of the day, you, you eject. Can you fly professionally with lower vision? I'm missing an eye. I need glasses for the other one. Ooh, that's going to be tough. I would talk to, that's going to be tough because of depth perception. That's where you're really going to run into an issue. Uh, my bad, bro. I thought it was really bad. Nah, mm -mm. I'm fine. I'm healthy. Uh, can I transfer to the guard and become an Apache? Well, I already identify as an Apache, so does that does that not count? Uh, is there a chance your books get translated into German? Not presently because I don't know how to do that toga is full power flex is calculated takeoff performance you calculate runway length yeah I don't care I don't remember what we called it in the uh, 737 I don't think we called it flex though maybe we did I don't know it's been two years since I've touched a uh, Airbus or, or sorry, airline, uh, airliner. Movers next assignment, astronaut. Yeah, I'd go to the moon. It'd be fun. Uh, speaking in regard to your mental health video, you mentioned music. Have you heard the light by disturb? It goes hand in hand with some of the songs I have. Uh, I, so I liked the Zade Wolf because of the lyrics, the Zade Wolf and the score. And there were, I mean, there was a song called Cold Blooded by Zade Wolf that I really liked. Um, El Capitan, I really enjoy, especially the new version. Um, you know, really, really good stuff. Cedar Key says, good evening from Ireland. Just having a Guinness while watching your live stream. That's funny. Awesome. Uh, in your opinion, is there any country that can beat the U.S. in an air war? Boy, no comment. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> uh, no comment. No comment. I guess you meant Saab Griffin. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you meant... Uh... Oh, boy, here we go. This one gets asked a lot. Would an experienced DCS player with no military training be able to start, take off, and land a real jet? I'll give them up to start. I think they would have some trouble with the takeoff and land part. I think it's overwhelming. Um, I think that's, I mean, I think it's going to be tough. Survi a survivable takeoff and landing might be a little challenging by themselves. Now, if they had an instructor to help them along, maybe. But to just jump in with no... I mean, because you're wearing the gear for the first time, you know, uh, maybe tough. You ever wanted to fly a military heavy like a C-130 or C-5? No. No. Citizen Soldier makes some good movies. You haven't checked them out. Cool name, though. Uh, let's see. G'day, Major from Sydney, Australia. 
Shit has hit the fan over the COVID-19 and transmission. Oh, boy. Yeah, sorry you guys are dealing with that. It sounds tough, especially the way the things are working out with the government. I hope. I wonder if, is that true? I mean, is that really, or is it really locked down like that? If you could play music in a fighter jet like an Iron Eagle, what would the first song you'd pick? I, I knew a guy that would wear uh, an iPod in the earbuds, and he would listen to the Black Eyed Peas when he'd BFM. Uh... I don't know what I, this is a good question. I mean, I, right now I'm on the Zade Wolf kick, so probably something from that, but like El Capitan, but yeah. Have you considered transferring Air Force helicopter rescue? I have, and I have not, um, they were not hiring the unit that I contacted. So kind of hit a brick wall there. No, it's the, uh, this is the Garmin 6 Sapphire. It's not an X, not an S, just a 6 Sapphire. Ever wanted to fly a 104? That's actually probably one of the aircraft I'm like, yeah, not really. I'd do it. I'd definitely fly anything once, but yeah, that's a, it's a gutsy airplane to be flying. Will you be able to ruin two Top Gun Maverick in the future? God, is that movie ever coming out? Thank you, Mover. Just bought your first four books, Inspector Origins, and li likely will enjoy them and buy more in a few months. Awesome. Thank you. What do you think about considering DCS a sim and not just a game for most game users? It's not a sim. It's a game. Here's what here's what separates a game, I mean, by the literal definition, right? It If it has some level of certification, which X-Plane 11 does, because uh, it can be used uh, in conjunction with some other controls as an FAA approved sim. You can log sim time with it. DCS is a game. It doesn't, they it, like, yes, it does simulate that. It does a very good job of it, but it's a game. Just like Microsoft Flight Sim is a game. Uh, it just, it's not high enough level to be considered a sim. You can't log time, you can't do anything. Now, yes, DCS is used as a desktop trainer for the A10. But even then, it's not a sim. It's a desktop trainer. So it's still just a game. I mean, it's 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 not, not going to be a, a sim. Did you ever hum the Jaws theme song? No. No. I'd be hard-pressed to hum the Jaws theme song now. <laughs> Do you still flare a flight fighter jet? Yeah, when I land. It's a good idea. What are you watching on TV? Uh, Narcos, The Expanse, and The Blacklist right now. The new ones, like the current episodes. Uh, no, I, do you know any B-52 guys from Barksdale? Would you like to see some bomber types? I don't know any B-52 guys. Ever considered a Breitling for a pilot watch? Uh, no, it's way too expensive. Like, I can't see spending that kind of money. Uh, are they retiring the T-38C or are they going to the Boneyard? It's going to be a while. Do pilots have to learn basic maintenance troubleshooting? I mean, we troubleshoot, but only what the checklist does. I mean, we're not trying to figure out how to fix it. What do you think about privately owning a T-38? Yeah, if I had that kind of money, it wouldn't be a T-38. Uh, how's 2022 been so far? Well, I got the Rona, so there's that. But, yeah, I recovered from the Rona. That's good. Hey, Mover, thanks for the great content. Been watching for two years. Could you tell me more about the bomber community? Uh, talk to Bone B-52. What are those guys like? I don't know. I mean, it's a crew aircraft. Crew aircraft that drops weapons, so. But yeah, I don't, I don't know anything, honestly. Would you rather fly with James Holden or Amos Burton? Amos. He's more badass. 
Did you watch the new Matrix? I did. And I thought it was entertaining. I know everybody hates it, but I was like, eh, it was entertaining for me. Apart from centrifuges to train for G-forces on the ground, do you have simulators? If yes, are they better than DCS in which regard? Uh, you mean in the military? Yes, we have simulators. And uh, are they better than DCS? No, the graphics aren't as good. What's better is, you know, you're in a 360 wraparound. You get all the switches and, you know, it's you get all the classified stuff. Is it better than DCS? Probably not. But no real sim is all that good, to be honest with you. I mean, nothing beats the real jet. Top three favorite firearms that have been made. Probably a Mark 18, uh, my STI 2011, uh, HK 416 maybe, you know, AK-74U, something like that. What is the point of BFM training in 2021 now that BVR missiles are reliable? Help me, I'm an idiot. They're not always reliable. You know, there's a lot of circumstances where you can find yourself at the merge. It's basic fighter maneuvers. It's a building block to other things. You know, you have to stay proficient on everything. Uh, how long until you can retire from DOD? Uh, five years minimum. Do you play any first-person shooters? Not really, because... Uh, dude, it gets me dizzy. A little motion sick, man. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of that. I don't like all the spinning around. Last guy called you major. I thought you were a lieutenant commander. I was until I transferred back to the Air Force. Now I'm a major in the Air Force. When you go back to work, you got to keep the stash. And now it looks terrible when it's just by itself. Thank you, IR. Uh, when's the next audio book? I, you know, I had an, I had a narrator and then changed. I don't know. I, I don't know. I might read it. Hell, who knows? Follow up a previous question about lowered vision with regional airlines. No, it's going to be hard, difficult all around. Cause you're going to need a class one medical and it's just going to, you're going to need probably a, a soda statement of demonstrated ability. Like you're going to have to get like a, special medical if you can get one so i would go go to the mayo clinic they can help you that's my advice you have mres you can eat it'd be kind of messy you wouldn't have a place to put it i mean i guess you could but i just ate protein bars i have not read the expanse novels the latest novel i read was noonan's fly into the wind Has an enlisted maintenance crewman ever been a smart ass with you? When are they not smart asses? <laughs> uh, what is your dream car? That ZR1 sitting in my garage. Can your fighter call sign be the same as a NATO name? Well, you can't be... Um, what is it, a MiG-15? Yeah, yeah. You, your call sign cannot be the NATO reporting for a MiG-15. However, comma, I do know a guy who's call signs farmer. So yeah, I don't see a problem with that. Do you ever think there'll be another dogfight between two man modern jet fighters? Sure. I don't see why I wouldn't. Uh, ever consider teaching a writing class? No, 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 no. Although... You know, good way to meet chicks. Can you knock an aircraft out of the air or injure the pilot and crew with a sonic boom? Nah, unlikely. How long did it take you to get over the Rona? Let's see. Started getting symptoms Friday. Started feeling better t today. Yeah, about a week. Thursday. Thursday's when I was my last day of feeling crappy. Would you buy a SCAR-17? Eh, no. Please fix my foggy head. You fly the 38A at Tyndall. Nope, Eglin. 
But you mentioned the 301st. I've seen you mention and wear the Talon Driver 301st patch. Yes, that's all correct. I fly the 38A. The jets are active duty. We're a classic associate flying with the two foots. See what else we got. Uh, are you opening emails in this mailbag? Yes, I did. I opened, I hope, well, so I opened all the ones that were questions not related to the mental health vlog. And the reason I did that was because I just, I wasn't sure who like email me to just say, Hey, thanks. Not realizing that it was, it was to be read on the channel or one of their emails read. So I just like, eh, you know, it's kind of a sensitive subject. I just blanket. Thank you. I appreciate everybody's kind words. Zero line life boring after a fighter gig. Oof. You answer that question and you piss everybody off, but the answer is yes. Fighter pilots carry a rifle or pistol? Yes. There actually is a, a rifle now that folds up and goes in the seat. Uh, ever been to Andrews? Right around the corner. Have I been to Andrews? Yes, I have been to Andrews one time. What's your VR DCS? Well, let's see here. Uh, I got Reverb G2. I've got a 3090. I got 11900K. Got 128 gigs of RAM. Um, what else? What else you want to know? It's on a MV, NVMe uh, M2 SSD. Probably some other stuff, too. You mentioned NASCAR time or two. Are you looking forward to the next-gen car coming out? Sure. Looks interesting. As long as they stop being so politically correct and just let them race. I commissioned in 2023 in hopes of becoming a fighter pilot. I start to realize how much DCS questions annoys yeah, pilots. Do you like AWACS control? I mean, it's nice to have. Yeah, especially if they're good. Um, we ever do a setup tour? I think I have. Haven't I? I don't know. No. How do you feel about YouTube removing the dislike button? Well, the button's still there. I can still see who likes and dislikes stuff. It's just, you can't. So, it's irrelevant to me. Not that it ever mattered. I mean, people think that disliking a video, you know, they're a little bit narcissistic. They're like, well, if I dislike it, it means nothing. YouTube just looks at interaction stats, you know, how long you watched it, what the click through rate is, you know, whether they commented, whether they liked it, like or dislike, completely pointless. Watch much F1? Not at all. Eh, maybe every now and then. How long did you have to wait before being able to snag a 3090? Uh, what, a year? I mean, I just got it back in the fall. So how long was that? No, I didn't watch the final Formula Race drama. What's your favorite base you've flown into? I used to love going to Hill. My favorite thing was to take off out of Homestead, hit a tanker, fly to Hill, drop off a jet, and then pick up a jet from the depot and bring one back. That was always my favorite thing to do. Has HAI told you they want you to do at Heli Expo? No, it's not a book signing. We're just going to, uh, I'm going to take some classes, meet some people, um, be a part of a, uh, you know, their safety stuff and, and just kind of do some videos about what they're doing. Hey, Mover, can't believe the F-35 helmet display is $400,000. A lot of money that they receive life. Yep. Sure is. You're right. Uh, are there any jets that you wouldn't want to fight against? Well, it depends on what I'm in. Am I in an F-16 in my prime? In which case, I fear no evil. You know, am I in a T-38? And all of them. I don't want to fight anybody. Dream job as a pilot? I think at this point in my career, you know, some kind of like accepting jets from the factory and delivering them to the squadron would be fun. 
you know, maybe combining that with some red air every now and then. I think that would be, you know, doing BFM. Uh, I got to ask, how'd your night lights not go out at 9.8 G's? I did get the tunnel vision. Yeah, I was looking through a soda straw for sure. Can you do a video on the Avro Arrow? I don't know anything about it, but uh, I guess we could if there's a cool video about it. Anyway, well, I think that's plenty for today's Mover Mailbag. I appreciate everybody. Thank you all for your support. Um, oh, one more question. Here we go. I, will you do more life vlogs like Life with Mover? I don't know. I mean... I got to figure that out. You know, that's probably something to look at for the next year and kind of what the direction of the channel is going to be, kind of what kind of content and stuff. It's all stuff I need to figure out. So anyway, but I appreciate everything. I'm glad you guys uh, tuned in. Ask your questions. If you want to send me something, uh, P.O. Box. Do I have that up there? Did I do that? No, I can do this one, though. Move your mailbag at cwmoin.com. If you want to send me something personally, you can send it to me, cwlemoyne at cwlemoyne.com, but that won't go on this. Um, and then also, uh, P.O. Box 8594, Mandeville, Louisiana, 70470. Just if you're going to send me something physical, you know, let me know so I know to go check. I try to avoid the post office wherever possible. But uh, anyway, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, uh, and we will see you on the next one. Probably. I hope so. Yeah. We'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.